Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. My name is Nicole, and today we are talking about the commitment that you hope, wish, pray for. The commitment that you hope, wish, pray for. Sometimes we get ourselves connected to people, places, and things. And those particular people, places, and things expect a commitment from us, okay? And if we don't commit, then we miss out. There is the better deal that is given to someone else. There was an expiration on what they were offering. There was that thing that all we had to do was just simply reply yes to, and we didn't. There was that place that we all said, oh yes, we're going to go. But then something comes up and you miss out on that trip. I'm talking to some of you all because you have went to the one true God and you prayed behind closed doors, even though your life hasn't exemplified a godly lifestyle. You went to the Lord and you said, Lord, all I want is this one thing to happen. Can you make this happen? Can you make this man just commit to just me? rather than commit so much to his job? Could you just make this woman commit to just me rather than having all of these so-called friends with benefits? Lord Jesus, can you just make a way for this job to just be the type of job, Lord, that I could commit to? Because I have a long track record of not committing. Uh Uh-oh. Somebody wants God to do some things for him or her. However, God is asking, what have you done for me lately? Have you been obedient? Have you trusted in me? You spend more time trusting in that man, that woman, that place, that thing. And then when you don't get the response that you want, you get upset. You start crying, complaining, feeling depressed, feeling like you just can't win. People want commitments. Some of you all, you have a commitment phobia. Oh, no, no, no. uh -uh. I don't promise anything to anybody, you know, because I got to keep my options open. I looked at this one young lady who came into the office and she made a statement to me uh, about how she had to weigh her options. And it took everything for me not to want to go there. The man that she was with, he is not committed to her, okay? They want to go in on this particular opportunity, which I can't get into details, but he nor she has a commitment between one another. Not when it comes to a marriage relationship, what have you, but you're willing, though, to put your money on the line. You're willing to make a commitment together on something related to your finances. Hmm. But you won't. You won't make that with me. No, you need to weigh your options. You need to get around (laughs) like Bobby Brown. You see. This is one of those things that when you're in sales and some of you all, you know what I'm talking about. You get those people who they have to talk things over with the wife, with the husband, with whoever. I mean, I thought you would have done that before you walked into my office. Um, You got some people who they've got to have this excuse, if you will, or many excuses as to why they never did call you. Now you're calling them. Listen. I got about 5, 10, 15, 20 plus other calls that I need to make. I just need to know, are you in or not? Stop wasting my time. You're not hurting my feelings if you say no. You see, stop beating around the bush. Just simply tell me yes or no, right? Part of being a success in that series was what? Let your yes be yes, right? Leaders know what they want. People who are successful know how to deal with issues as they come about. When they give their word, when they say they're committed, they go all the way. 
But we got some folks who, like I said, they're wishing upon a star. They're hoping and praying for commitment from someone, something, what have you. But you won't even stay committed to the one true God long enough (laughs) to just get a word from him. There's the arguing and the fussing and the fighting that happens between some couples. And guess what it boils down to? Somebody simply doesn't want to commit. They don't want to commit to the things that they have said that have come out of their mouth, whether it was vows or whether it was just us laying on a bed somewhere naked talking about, yeah, baby, how you doing this morning? And yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there for you. Really? <laughs> and then some folks find out the hard way when you go through the pockets or when you're on the Internet or when you're in the car or when you hear through the grapevine. But what happened to the commitment that he made? Oh, that's right. See, whether you make it verbally or whether you make it on a piece of paper, the point is, is that a promise is a promise. Nowadays, of course, when it comes to legal matters, you got to make sure that things are in writing. Why? Because people lie. Because people say, oh, yes, I'm there for you. And, you know, I'm going to pay my portion of the rent. Come on now. And they don't. Come on. I just told somebody not that long ago. I said, you better make sure that you put everything in writing because he went on and on about all of what they're going to do. And, you know, uh, it talked about. Uh, how um, they're very compatible, you know, this this living together arrangement. There's those who are roommates and they talk about how we're just, just great friends, but nobody has anything in writing. I don't want to see people end up in people's court, but folks do things in lazy ways. Some of you all, you had to be witnesses, right? (laughs) You had to deal with your share of issues because somebody was like, you were there, weren't you? You were there. I mean, I need you to back me up on this. I need you to validate me on this. So-and-so gave their word, remember? Right? And some folks end up scratching their head and they're like, well, what exactly was said? Or I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, no, I need your help on this. I really do. But I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. And that's another thing. You don't want to be that false witness either. You see, if you call yourself a believer, you see, you just want to dot your I's, cross your T's with the Lord. And even if you do mess up, you go to him, you confess sin and repent. We once again got some folks, though, that are commitment phobes. I don't like to commit to anything. You know what I mean? I like to just do what I like to do when I want to do it. Yay. Yeah. But you see. People after a while get tired of folks that are like that. And this is why, once again, we got the arguing, the fussing, the fighting and people ready to go upside somebody's head. You told me you said. And you see, nowadays, the word is not the bond. Right. That's why I encourage people put things in writing. I don't care if that is your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. We grew up together, ride or die. He would never do this, that, and the other. Stop saying that. That right there is immature conversation when I hear it. Because you see, business is business. And we're not going to sit here and have these little conversations about, oh, folks and their sentimental things from way back when. Business is business. Once again. And so... If somebody says that they're going to do something, can I get that in writing? If somebody says, uh, can you make this thing or that thing happen? And you say yes, then you better make sure that you back it up and put it in writing. If you are that good at whatever you do, then you should have no problem putting it in writing. But once again, we got some people who they're nothing more than shady. They're shady. They were shady going into the relationship. I got to go there with some folks. They were shady going into the relationship. Got a history of cheating, creeping, and what have you. But okay, I'll give her a commitment to live with her. Okay, so you gave her that much. But you're not giving her nothing else. You're telling her one thing and your mind and your heart is saying something else. I don't want to be committed to her. I really don't because that's forever, 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 ever. Yeah, uh uh-huh. See, in the eyes of God, he doesn't play around with people, but people like to play around. 
such as playing house. I was told about this years ago and I didn't take it seriously. I'm like, you know, that's old school. People always throwing that up. Right. And anyway, I'm not a believer, so I don't need to be held accountable to this thing of playing house. Because, look, at the end of the day, I need to get to know this guy. And one thing about it, if he doesn't want to uh, if, if he acts up or if he doesn't want to go all the way with me in terms of a marriage, well, it's no harm done. I mean, hey, I, I mean, the only thing we got between us is a 12 month lease or six months or whatever. Well, let me tell you, what I underestimated about the whole plan house thing was my emotions, was the soul ties, was the demonic presence that creeps up and says to you, especially when they stay out a little too long or they're hanging out with their buddies. He's not your husband. So why are you expecting him to report to you? That's not your wife right? They deal with those issues too. So why do you think that she should come at a certain time and report to you? You see, you see, we open up this vortex, if you will, to the demonic. Some folks, they open up this vortex to get some power from the demonic. But as you very well know, children of darkness, you know that the demonic comes to collect sooner or later. You had the fun, you had the ride. And now, here he shows up with all of his drama and trauma. You owe me. And so what does the believer who compromises his or her faith do? Goes off and runs and hide like Adam and Eve did in the garden. I'm going to hide behind Jesus now because I got myself caught up in a mess. I'm going down this rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole that's full of confusion and upset and bitterness and Going down this rabbit hole isn't worth all of this. You see, there's various ways that you can open up a vortex, if you will, of foolishness, of evil, of an exchange of power and control and whatever else you want, such as money. So an individual will say one thing and do another. And now we're walking down this tunnel, if you will, this hole. It's dark. It's crazy. Sometimes some things pop out and bite, pop up and bite us. Right. It's these so-called uh, promises. These so-called promises are really false promises. Soon as somebody gets upset, somebody gets angry, somebody doesn't want to do something. They back out. I oh, don't believe anything I say. What? What do you mean? Well, I mean, look, I can get out of this. Why? But but you said, I know what I said, but I didn't think you were going to act like this. And so you're standing there and you're scratching your head like, why would somebody make a promise, tell me that they were going to do something and then not do it? And then some people will go so far as to jump through so many hoops and cause so much confusion for people just because they don't want to be held accountable for the things that they say, for the things that they do. You can head a lot of arguments off from the start by simply saying, I apologize. I know I said this. However, the information says otherwise or something has arisen that has caused my word not to be my bond. You see, some people are OK with that. Some people are like, OK, I get it, but I need you to fix this thing. So I need a refund. I need a credit. Uh, some folks in relationships. OK, if that's how you feel, you do know, though, that I am moving. I'm not going to continue this with you. You did not give me a commitment to marriage like you promised. You didn't commit to, let's say, a family. You said initially you wanted a family. Now, you know, the wedding and everything else is taking place. And now you're backpedaling. You're saying you don't want a family. OK, so I have every right to make a decision to do something differently. OK, so, you know, there are going to be those consequences to when we say, oh, well, this is what happened. But there was a change of plans. You got to be ready for that consequence of whatever you said or whatever you did. You see, some of you all, you're holding some people accountable right now. You're telling them, listen, you made me a promise. But can I tell you that when you try to 
keep people to promises, especially ungodly people, you're wasting your time. You really are. Because some people, they're just going to keep stringing you along, keep stringing you along until they start ignoring your phone calls, ignoring your letters, ignoring you, showing up. Uh, they'll even change locations or what have you. That's why you end up having to get law enforcement involved, attorneys, because some people just don't want to deal with what they've caused. The problems, the, the depression for some people that they brought, up, brought on them because they kept saying they were going to do this. They kept saying they were going to do that. Some people go crazy. They go crazy listening to a person say time and time again, this time I'm going to do the right thing. I promise I won't go to jail this time or I won't steal this or I won't lie to you or I won't cheat to you, cheat on you. Or I, um, I'm going to give you just what you asked for. I know I owe you the refund. I know I owe you the credit. Um, and they keep telling you they're going to do these things and they don't do them. And then they get upset with us because now we are in their faces about it. And then when we don't get results from being in their faces, now we've got to get outside parties involved and they get upset about that. All you had to do was do the right thing from the start. Some people, they show their weakness. They show their weakness early on and it's up to us to pay very close attention to how weak they are, whether they're a leader, whether they are a parent, whether they are your spouse or whoever they are to you or what your connection is. God does give us discernment early on about those people who we are considering partnering with in any number of things. He or she showed up late, then showed up late again and again. Do you really need to, you know, <laughs> partner with this person? Uh, this person has repeatedly told you, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they didn't. This person said that they had your back and then when Porsche came to shove, they were nowhere to be found. This one said that, yes, I apologize. I'm so sorry. And then turned right around and offended you time and time again. You see? So you see that there are so many times in our lives where we have people who just don't keep their word. We have people who get caught up in drugs and alcohol and all sorts of crazy addictions that they forget that they made promises. They, they are just, what, bewildered when you ask them or tell them or remind them, you see. And so we got some people in a network right now who had their share of heartache. And we're going to go to the Bible today and we're going to trust that the Lord is going to fight your battles this day. Those of you all who have held on to a promise, those of you all who thought people were going to be committed but weren't. Those that you just, just really wanted what was best for them. And they said some things to you. And now they're doing anything and everything to make it look like they never said, never did. Got you feeling like you're crazy or going crazy. Manipulators do this. And so we are turning those names over to the one true God this day. Whoever these people are who have brought about heartache saying that they will always or will do or I promise. We're turning them over right now. I see many, many women who have gotten themselves in positions that are meant for wives but they're not wives. And I see where they're going to try to make a round peg fit into a square hole by manipulating, persuading, convincing, trying to be on their best behavior to get a ring. And even for some of these women, they're going to get the ring, but it's not going to be happy ever after. You're not marrying a believer. For some of these women, they are not believers themselves. What does it take to be a believer? It takes commitment. Commitment to the one true God. They are expecting these men to be committed to them, but yet they're not committed to their father. And so when 
The future reveals itself. It's going to consist of the cheating, the lying, the disrespect, the abuse. Once again, I'm talking to some of you all who you did not. You did not start off on a good foot with your relationship. And it seems like it's going downhill. That's because it is. God is nowhere to be found. You cannot bring God into something that is not a covenant promise. That is not covered by the blood. That is not a union of holy matrimony. And think that there's not going to be any consequences. There are consequences. We all have dealt with our share of consequences, bringing God into something that's unfit, unrighteous, unholy. Many of us walked around with sad looking eyes and relatives and friends asked what's wrong. And we said nothing because we knew that that person that we were living with either didn't want to commit or either committed half-heartedly. Lord Jesus, I'm coming where you all are, right there in your homes. Sitting back, upset, frustrated, angry for some of you all because you made commitments. You made promises you said you were going to do. Or maybe your spouse said, and somebody dropped the ball. And now you're reaping the consequences of that. I'm going to do. I promise. But what you didn't communicate was the conditions. Or others, they commit, they communicated the conditions. But the conditions were so hard. They were so difficult. They were so challenging to meet. And you knew it. And this way you didn't have to commit to what you said. You didn't have to commit to what you promised. Because you never really intended on doing the right thing. The narcissist thinks that way. The narcissist, the self-absorbed, self-centered person thinks that way. I'm going to get something out of the deal, but I'm not going to hold up my end of the bargain. I'm going to keep making these people think that if they do this and if they do that and if they do and more and more and more and more. And then when they get tired, when they get frustrated, when they come to collect, then once again, you're saying, well, did you do this? Or, oh, no, no, no. You offended me when you said this. And what? And God is like, no, uh, uh-uh. you're not going to be caught up in that circle of abuse victim. You're not going to be in the snare of the controlling one who dangles a carrot higher and higher. Promising this and promising that. So many sons and daughters don't have quality relationships with mothers and fathers because that's what was done. There were promises made. There were things that were said. Somebody didn't hold to their end of the bargain. And when they were called out on it, they pointed the finger. They projected. They crazy. They they used crazy making tactics to get some people off their back. I don't owe you anything. I don't need to give you. And what have you done for me? And blah, 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 blah. And that's why, once again, people have their share of heartache and upset. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Lord Jesus. So if you don't want to be with this man who's playing games, then you know what to do. If you don't want to be with this woman who keeps wanting you to commit to something, and yet deep down inside you really don't, then you need to stop playing games. Somebody's heart is broken right now. Psalm 147.3, he heals. That's God, not man, not woman, not mama, not daddy. He, God, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Proverbs 16.9 and 33, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. 
The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Psalm 3, 4 or 34, 18 and 19. The Lord is near. Listen closely. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. When you feel good and you feel okay and all right and you feel like a message like this doesn't apply to you, then you're not going to feel the presence of the Lord. Not in this particular message because you can't resonate with the broken heart because everything is okay and all right with your plan, house arrangement, living with so-and-so. You could have clicked off a long time ago, but for the one whose heart aches, because somebody made a promise, because somebody said that they were going to do this and do that. I mean, we got people who work in customer service who are so disappointed and so upset, can't seem to make sales because people make promises and they don't keep them. And then you got managers who don't understand we can't keep chasing after the wind. Once a person has played that game over and over again about, yeah, well, I think and I will and I might and all that, and they still don't commit, we could call 10, 12, 20 other people. I mean, some people are brokenhearted about their jobs. It's not even about the relationship that's going on at home because he or she already married him or her. But it's about what's taking place at the workplace. All these people who just can't seem to keep their word. And if it frustrates you to the point where you feel like your health is being upset by it, then maybe it's time to look for another job. You can do better. You can always do better. Better than where you are right now. Just when you thought, well, I'm in a good job. I'm okay. I'm all right. Well, then okay. But for those that are so brokenhearted by all of this, I get it. I understand. I've been there. I've done it. I've seen the movie. People just don't want to do what's right. So we're giving those people's names over to the Lord, whether we know them or we don't. And we're trusting that God will move upon their spirits to do us right. Even if it is simply picking up the phone and saying, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. Can you please take my name off the list? You see, Lord Jesus, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. That's why some people were down a week ago, but they're up today. God delivered you. And you thought, oh, well, I need to go to the church or I need to sit in front of uh, a counselor or something. And God's like, I delivered you from that. The enemy keeps holding that over your head. We redirect our thoughts. I'm going to redirect my thought from what this man said that he was going to do. And I'll just do it myself. Come on. I'm going to redirect my thought on what these people told me they were going to help me with. That's okay. Because I know God is going to help me. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I'm not going to play these games with folks who want you to dance by the beat of their drum. My grandmother used to say they want you to kiss their bleep. No, uh uh. No, 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 no. You take those names and you give them over to the one true God. And every time the thought comes, you just redirect. I'm not going there today. I put that person in God's hands. I don't care if it's at the workplace. I put that person in God's hands. I don't care if it's at the church. I put that person in God's hands or in the civic group or wherever you may be. You promised, but I'm not going to argue with you because I didn't put you in God's hands. We don't tell them these things. We do these things quietly. It's spiritual warfare at its best. It's guerrilla warfare. We're not telling everybody everything. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Somebody needs rest because the promises have just mounted up to the point where you're weary. So you get away from the people and the places and things that got you so burdened. You give yourself a break. I can't take another lie. <laughs> it went from a promise to now it's just a lie. I need my rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, says the Lord, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew eleven twenty eight twenty nine. Hallelujah. Isaiah thirty three ten. Now I will rise, says the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now I will lift myself up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord. The Lord, he even encourages himself. <laughs> and we are there to join in on that encouragement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 9, 9 and 10, the Lord also will be a refuge. You see, God is our refuge. There's spiritual beings that we can see as well as what we cannot see. And so when things are at work and we can't really explain them or we can't go to certain people and talk about them, we go and take refuge in the Lord. Right now, I'm declaring that someone is going to get their breakthrough because they decided to take refuge in the Lord rather than start drama here, there, and everywhere with some people on their false promises. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. People who make false promises, the demonic puts them up to oppressing you so that you don't move ahead, so that you don't get things done, so that you can just keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it, and then you get caught up in all sorts of Things that you don't want to get caught up in mentally, physically, spiritually, sexually, you name it. No, I'm taking refuge in the one true God. I'm trusting that he's fighting my battles. I'm wearing the spiritual armor according to Ephesians 6 as I'm walking into that room, as I'm riding in that car, as I'm waiting on that bus, as I'm driving the vehicle. Come on now, somebody get on board with me. The Lord also will be a refuge for us, right? Those that have feel, felt distressed and oppressed, discouraged, used and abused, a refuge in times of trouble. Somebody took something from you, but yet they promised to bring it back and it troubles your soul. Lord Jesus, I turn that person over to you. I'm not going to keep upsetting myself over this thing. A refuge in times of trouble and those who know your name will put their trust in you for you Lord have not forsaken those who seek you are you seeking the Lord on this matter concerning this person who promised to do something and then they didn't do it come on now be encouraged this day but confess your sin though and repent before you go before the righteous God with all of your burdens because you know that we're not perfect right and you know that sometimes we say and we do things that are not right. Get right with the Lord and then tell him what is on your heart concerning these people who have broken your heart. Psalm 138.3, in the day when I cried out, you answered me. Thank you, Jesus. And made me bold with strength in my soul. Isaiah 58.11, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Let me say that again. The Lord will guide you continually, right? When you trust in him, this is what he's going to do for you. He's going to guide you continually. He's going to satisfy your soul in drought. Some of these relationships is nothing more than a season of drought. What else is he going to do for you? He's going to strengthen your bones. Some of you all feel so weak, so tired, having to deal with all of this. And then God is going to be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. How'd you get your strength? How'd you come up out of that? How is it that you feel so much peace now? This was a spiritual issue I recognized. And so I gave it over to the one true God. Oh, uh-huh. Because I knew that as long as I was dealing with things in the flesh, I wasn't getting things done. And this person seemed like they kept winning. And so when I started turning this thing around and I made it a spiritual battle, Lord Jesus, I'm coming out ahead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming out ahead. Woo. Hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's all you need to do is just say, yes, Lord. He's coming. He's coming where you are. Lift up holy hands, those of you all who have mustard seed faith. You know mustard seeds are small. All it takes is a little faith. And I'm telling you, God's going to move on your behalf. And you're not going to have to be like those other folks that, oh, I got to make good on this thing. You don't have to make good on this thing if God didn't call you to it. 
Sometimes all we do is just simply apologize for those of us who had made promises. And then we found out, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, that was the wrong promise. That wasn't the right thing to say. No, I can't honor this commitment. Sometimes that happens. Doesn't make you a bad person. Sometimes there's certain processes, operations, and procedures that's just not good enough. They haven't been tweaked. They're not in the best interest of the consumer. No sense in carrying that guilt. We give guilt over in the name of Jesus right now. I command all spirits of guilt to be far removed and sent into the abyss. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, that is it. We close out this message. I hope that I've addressed your issues today. And those of you all that you keep hope and wishing, no sense in hoping and wishing you got God on the case, okay? God is a good God. All we do is just give honor and praise to him, even in our storms. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube, NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Blessings to you.